So the first problem is going to be 4.39. Uh, this is very similar to uh, this is the exact same problem that you did last week, except this time we're going to be looking for the reaction force to hold the tube in place. So the first thing to do is to write down kind of what we know, which is we know the input speed is 7.5 meters per second. And then we also solved from last week, we know that the Vmax is going to be 10 meters per second and the Vmin is going to be 5 meters per second. So the next step is to draw our control volume. Uh, so this will be drawn in red as shown. And I will also be adding the reaction force and uh, showing the normal vectors of our control volume. So the reaction forces, I picked the direction at random, but you can see that um, it's kind of a guess as to where I would imagine the reaction force would be pointing towards. The next step, I'm gonna write down the conservation of momentum. Uh, so this is the summation of the forces uh, that will be equal to the rate of change of the momentum going in and out of the control volume, uh, plus the incoming and outgoing uh, momentum from the control surface. So the next step here is I'm gonna rewrite this conservation of momentum, but only for the x direction. So we'll have the summation of forces again is equal to the rate of change of momentum inside the control volume plus the ingoing and outgoing fluxes. Um, right here, the next step, so we know that the rate of change, sorry, is gonna be zero inside of the control volume. This is because we're at steady state. Now here, respecting the coordinate system that was predefined in the question, we'll have minus Rx for the reaction force, and then we'll also have a negative due to the fact that our normal vector is pointing out of the control volume as our incoming flux is coming in. Since the velocity is also not dependent of the area, and we can bring it outside of the integral, and what we get right now is just the reaction in x is going to be equal to rho times u squared times the area, which will be defined as wh or as h squared, since the question states that it's a two-dimensional square channel. And here we get that our final reaction force in X is gonna be 320.6 newtons. So 
So here I can rewrite again the conservation of momentum, this time in the y direction. Uh, the equation will be very similar setting it up, uh, just keeping a note of the direction we pose the reaction force to be, and also our normal vector pointing outside of the control volume. So now the difference in this part compared to the part in x is that our velocity will be dependent of where we travel in the x direction if we look at the sketch on the right hand side. This means that we need to find a function of v which is in relation to x. So as we travel up the x direction we'll have a different velocity. So again, following the coordinate system, we know that if we were at an x direction of zero, we'd want v max or 10 meters per second. And if we were at a distance h of uh, along the x axis, we'd have a velocity of v min. Uh, because we know this is linear, we could quite simply find an easy function for this, which would be minus five x over h plus 10. We can also test that this equation works by placing zero inside so that then we retrieve 10 meters per second at the max. And if we replace H inside, well, then we get five meters per second, which is the minimal velocity. Now here we can replace our function VX inside of the integral right there. And then we simply have to just compute the integral um, I pulled out the width of the from inside the integral. That's because we're at a we assume a constant velocity profile along the width of the pipe. And also one thing of note, I did make a mistake in my integral, but I corrected it a little bit later. But the bounds should be from zero to h.
And here we get that our reaction force in the y direction will be 588.8 newtons. For the final part of the problem, we could find the magnitude and the direction of the resultant force. Um, this is just, I'm drawing the little triangle in the corner representing the direction of which the y and x reaction force will be. And then I can use Pythagoras' theorem to find the reaction force and the angle it is applied at. And our final answer here is 670.4 newtons applied at an angle of 60 degrees. And that's the angle of 60 degrees if we look at the little sketch I did in the top left corner.